extremely boring, the actual technical application of e-commerce. We all want to get paid, sure. But I'm a, I'm a marketing and business uh, branding guy. So screw it, we're going to talk a little bit about marketing and branding before we get into e-commerce. Uh, got a question for you. What is this right here? It's an iPhone. What's that? Mobile device. Necessary evil, maybe. Beautiful feat of uh, engineering. This is actually, if you think about it, this is a portal into the aggregation of all of human knowledge. Right? Think about that for a minute. The entire history of mankind, we can access the knowledge through this device. Let's talk about Google. What is Google at its essence? Search engine, right? Technology company, information company, of course. Um, but at its essence, Google is the objectification of human thought. When you go onto Google and you, you have something that's top of mind, you're taking that subjective and you're putting it into the objective. Think of yourself in Google shoes for a minute, and you have this flood of data that's coming at you that's coming from people's minds all over the planet. And so you can look at that data and you can say, wow, look at these trends. Look at, uh, you know, look at what's happening on a yearly basis or quarterly basis. Look at the, what's top of mind in Asia versus North America. Um, what's different about it? What's similar about it? I think of Google as, you might have heard this analogy before, but you know, when you go into a grocery store and you're looking for a, a gallon of milk, that's Google, right? It's top of mind. You know what I'm here for, you know what I'm looking for. One of the things that my clients always say to me is, Pete, do we have to use Twitter? What, why do we have to? Please, tell us there's a way around Twitter. But what I explain to them is that if Google is going into the grocery store and, and getting a gallon of milk, Twitter is, when you're standing at the, when you're standing at the checkout line, this is Twitter, right? Oh, Jennifer Aniston's pregnant. Mm. Oh, Kate Middleton, she is so beautiful. Oh, wait a minute. I don't know. What a filthy whore. <laughs> hmm. well, it's not like she's showing much anyway. Okay, that's Twitter, right? It's stream of consciousness. So we have Google that's top of mind. We have Twitter that's stream of consciousness. Think of it that way from a marketing or branding standpoint. What's Facebook? At its essence, I believe that Facebook is a manifestation of our spiritual connectedness throughout the entire world. So think of yourself 15 years ago, and if I went to you, if you're a business owner or you're a marketer, and I said, I've got this device that's going to tell you exactly what's top of mind of your prospect, or it's going to tell you exactly what they're thinking about right now in their stream of consciousness, and oh, by the way, you're going to be able to connect to anybody else on the entire planet. It's profound. We're living in a profound time right now. And the problem that I see a lot of my clients have is that we're still trying to apply industrial age, square peg thinking into information age, uh, a circular whole of information age. So the one thing that I want you to take away right now on this little marketing skill is the one skill and the art that we really need to do a lot better at is listening. Because our customers are telling us what's top of mind. They're telling us, what stream of consciousness, and we're all connected. So that's the big takeaway that I want to talk to you about right now. And obviously, once we do a better job of that, we're going to have a much better chance of getting them to the point where we can actually conduct e-commerce. So let's talk about e-commerce. If there's any uh, single males in the audience, pay attention because this information totally scores with the ladies. <laughs> right? Basic e-commerce transaction. Somebody's on your website, they go to a, a buy now button, the buy now button takes them to a checkout page. All of that data that's on that page, all of the fields, this is you know review for a lot of you, I realize, but that is essentially software, and that software is what we call a shopping cart. So, and part of the reason, just FYI, why I'm telling you this, because when you look at your bank statement and there's fees coming out of it, you're gonna to want to know, at least pretend like you know that there's this is this is who's charging you right here, okay? So this is why this is important. I don't even totally get all this stuff. It doesn't matter. What's kind of nice about this is it is fairly complex, but once you get this set up, then you kind of have to forget about it. But I do want you to know about it because you're going to pay for it. So the shopping cart is the thing that actually manages and facilitates the checkout process. Once somebody hits a submit button to submit an order, uh, it goes to a payment gateway. The payment gateway that I use is authorized.net. 
they're like one of the leading gateways uh, on the planet. So if you're thinking about e-commerce, I definitely recommend checking out uh, Authorize.net. So Authorize.net encrypts that information from your shopping cart, passes it on to a payment uh, processor. That payment processor then is the one that actually charges the credit card, and then on a successful charge, passes it off to your merchant account, which is your bank account. Upon a successful purchase, the payment processor then sends back a yay, we got a successful purchase to the payment gateway. The payment gateway takes that encrypted information, decrypts it to the shopping cart, and tells the shopping cart, hey, thank you for your order to the customer. Of course, if the payment processor doesn't successfully charge, it sends that information to the payment gateway back to the shopping cart and says, you know, you're screwed, sorry, your card you know, was declined. It, maybe if you worked a little bit harder, you'd have a little more money. But. So, that is the basics of an e-commerce transaction. Now, what shopping carts do we want to use? Um, this, this is quick and dirty, okay? So, PayPal, if, if you had to get a website up today or in 30 minutes, PayPal is a solution I would recommend. Um, it's also good if you're starting a business on the side and you want to just get, you know, started with e-commerce. It's very easy to set up once you log into PayPal. If you click on uh, the Merchant Services tab, uh, and then uh, next to Create Payment, there's a quick little form you fill out. It spits out some code. You grab that code, you put it on your WordPress site, and you publish, you publish it, and then you have a Buy Now button on your site. Um, the next shopping cart solution that I recommend is called One Shopping Cart, literally the number one, shoppingcart.com. This is um, an example of one shopping cart that I used for a client site, Beverly Johnson. She's got some beauty products that we put up, and the reason why I like one shopping cart is if you look at the site right now, you'll see, well, it might be kind of hard to see, but if you look at the URL, it's beverlyjohnson.com. If somebody clicks on add to bag and then ultimately check out, they're going to get to this page, and if you look at the URL, it's essentially one shopping cart's URL. So you're going from your, your client's website, beverlyjohnson.com, and that's hosted with you know, that web host. When they click on the Buy Now, now you're over to one shopping cart. But the reason why I like one shopping cart is, is you can see, you can skin it so that it looks very, very similar to the actual website. So the customer doesn't really realize it's, it's good uh, uh, user design, user experience design. So we can add a logo, we can add a background, it feels like it's the exact same site, but it's secured now on one shopping cart's uh, servers. So plus it looks elegant, I like, I kind of, I'm a design guy, so I kind of like how it's clean and neat. Um, if you're going to be, uh, the other thing is too with uh, one shopping cart, we only have, with Beverly we had about, I think we had like 25 products. Um, usually I recommend to people, if you have, say, 30 and under, um, I would recommend one shopping cart. If you're talking about 40, 50 plus products, then you're really starting to get into that e-tailer space, um, in which case I would recommend like a Shopify or Magento. Now keep in mind, these once you get to Shopify and Magento, you're outside of WordPress altogether. That's not even a WordPress thing. These are really like e-tailers or, or uh, you know, online shops that you can build from the beginning, from scratch. So, just to kind of review, PayPal and one shopping cart, you still have your, your WordPress website, but when they click on Buy Now, they're going over to PayPal or, sh or one shopping cart to actually facilitate the transaction. Um, like, and again, Shopify, Magento, those are completely outside of WordPress, but I did want to mention in case there's anybody here that's got that many products. Um, and then I also wanted to mention Infusionsoft. Um, Infusionsoft is the solution that I use, um, but Infusionsoft is actually a shopping cart, customer relationships manager, affiliate manager. It's kind of a one-stop shop. Um, they're a little bit more expensive. They're a couple thousand dollars up front and then a few hundred bucks a month. Um, and just FYI, one shopping carts anywhere from, uh, I think it's like 30 to maybe uh, 100, 150 bucks a month, depending on what bells and whistles you want to get on it. Shopify is also very uh, cost effective. Um, it's a monthly, it's there for that as well. Uh, the other thing that you want to think about too when you're building an e commerce site is um, search engine optimization. When you're doing Shopify or Magento, because those are full you know, online shops, you can optimize each of those product pages. With one shopping cart or PayPal or that kind of a solution, you're really going to be optimizing your page on the WordPress side. That's what's going to get ranked in the search engines, and then when the person gets there and they click on buy now, they're going to go over to you know, the one shopping cart solution. 
So let's talk about WordPress e-commerce plugins. Um, when I first started doing e-commerce online a few years ago, the plugins were not that great, so I kind of skipped the plugins, and that's why I'm on the shopping carts um, that I mentioned previously. But I took uh, a little bit more research, look, went back and looked at um, what's working right now, and I would be totally comfortable with WooCommerce. I would think that they're one of the best uh, plugins out there for WordPress. Um, very, very robust. The company is uh, Studio Press. They do a lot of design stuff as well. So it's a beautiful um, user interface, and uh, they've got you know some powerhouse developers behind them. So you, you know that it's going to work. Um, eShop also looked like a really nice one. WordPress uh, e-commerce, they used to have sort of mixed reviews, but now they seem to be better. So um, those would be, I would choose one of those three if you want to go with a WordPress plugin e-commerce solution. Um, I don't recommend, um, maybe one of you know, is WordPress e-commerce free? Does anybody know? It is. I, okay, it is free. Um, as a general rule for, for something like this, I would not go with a free service only because I want to pay for it because I want a company behind it that's going to stand behind their product. So if something happens, I need some support, I want to be able to go to a support. Uh, yes, sir? WordPress e-commerce has a premium plugin upgrade. Okay. So WordPress e-commerce has a, a free plugin, but then they also have a, a premium that you can upgrade to and, and get some more support and extra levels. So, uh, yes? Uh, I also want to say WooCommerce is actually by WooThemes. WooThemes. And, Sorry. And, uh, they also offer support for the plugin as well. Yep. Um, and there's a huge community for it. So even if you don't support forms, if their support team doesn't get to you, usually somebody uh, from the community will. Cool. Um, so if it were me, just my personal opinion, I would go with WooCommerce. They, uh, they really have their stuff together. So let's talk a little bit about e-commerce tips. Uh, this is one of my like little. Uh, <laughs> this is one of my like little uh, ninja moves. Uh, Fiverr.com. Are you all familiar with Fiverr.com? Fiverr.com is a website where you can go on and people offer to do things for you for five bucks. So if you're not the technical type, you can go on there. I just did a search uh, yesterday for e-commerce, and these are some of the ones that came up. Uh, I will create a professional e-commerce website for you for five dollars. The second one, I will give you an online uh, e-commerce store, WordPress theme, eShop template, so I'm going to show you the eShop one for five dollars. Now you might be thinking like, why would I pay five bucks, this is a pretty big deal. A lot of these guys will have this stuff that's cloned and it's just a one-click install for them, so it's very easy and quick for them, they can do it for five bucks, but you're still getting, you know, those other professional uh, solutions that I was telling you about. Um, the last one, I will install a Magento e-commerce site. So Fiverr.com is one that you want to check out. They have a lot of other stuff on there too, by the way. You can get tons of stuff, tons of WordPress, you know, installation, or you got a bug, a CSS fix, CSS fix or whatever. You can do that for five bucks. Uh, here's another sort of more advanced move. Uh, if you're going to be selling a product, uh, offer different ways to pay for it. Uh, this is for a product that was a subscription. On the left there, it's a ninety-seven dollar a month. On the right, it's thousand uh, dollars all up front for the year. So you essentially get about two years or two months off. So uh, there's there's two things going on here. Number one, you've got uh, two ways to pay, which offers more convenience to your prospect or to your customer. Um, but you can also play around too with um, contrast and framing. And what I mean by that is, if you have a product and you're trying to sell a product, let's say for hundred bucks, you can do that on the left, and then on the right side. You can have that product plus some upgrades, um, and so maybe that up on the right it could be an upgrade, and that the total price for that could come to like three hundred bucks. And so what happens is you, you create a contrast, and so the customer will look at that and they'll say, "Well, I don't even really need those upgrades. I'm going to go with the one that is a hundred bucks." Um, and then we've tested this, and it works. And people like to see what you're essentially doing is you're framing it, you're showing the value of the hundred bucks instead of just letting the hundred bucks sit there alone. You're putting it next to something that's more expensive. There is some extra value to this, of course. We're not, you know, manipulating it. We're just showing extra value, but it, it frames it for the customer. So that's a little bit more advanced marketing move uh, using e-commerce. And then, last but not least, I also want to just share um, some of the shopping carts have the ability to edit the checkout page. And there's been extensive research that's done that shows that people will, there's a lot of people that will get to your checkout page and then leave and not pay. It's called the shopping cart abandonment rate. 